Welcome back to the series called Answers. My name is David Hibbert. And in the series called Answers, my goal is to help you by sharing with you short biblical answers to questions that people have been asking me. And today's question is actually a follow up to question number nine. This question number 10 is how does the fivefold ministry function? How does a fivefold ministry function? If you know what the fivefold is, check out my episode number nine. But let me give you a few examples of how the fivefold fold ministry functions. Okay, number uh, yeah. Number one, the fivefold ministries are based upon relationships and roles. They function on the basis of relationships and roles. As I said in my previous teaching, um, the fivefold ministries are not titles or positions. They are relationships and roles of functioning. In my family, I have a wife and my wife calls me husband. But that doesn't mean I'm a husband to everyone. I'm only a husband to her. It's based upon a relationship with my wife. Well, I have four kids. And all of my kids, my children, call me daddy. That's the title they give me, daddy. But that doesn't mean I'm a daddy to everyone. My, my, my title, daddy, is based upon my relationship to my four kids. It's a function or a role based upon my daddy relationship with my four children. And in the same way, I am not an apostle because I'm a founder and leader of a number of ministries. Um, I'm only an apostle if I function as an apostle in relationships and roles towards others. See, some people do call me Apostle Dave uh, because I function as an apostle in my relationship and role towards them. Other people, they don't call me Apostle Dave, they call me Pastor Dave because I function as a pastor in my relationships and roles with them. With still other people, they, they, they don't call me Apostle or, pro, or, a, or I'm sorry, uh, a pastor, they call me a teacher. They call me Teacher Dave because I function as a teacher in my uh, relationship and my role with them. And still other people, they just call me Dave. Okay, because to them I don't function in relationship or roles as an apostle or a teacher or a pastor. Okay, so my f so fivefold ministries are not titles or positions; they are roles and functions. Now let's define the, uh, those fivefold roles and functions, or clarify. See, Apostle Paul said a couple interesting things about his fivefold or his apostolic functioning. Okay, he said basically that relationships and roles can be based upon your relationship with cultural groups. Okay, in, in Romans chapter eleven, verse thirteen, I am ta talking to you Gentiles, in so much as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. Right, I'm an apostle to the Gentiles, Paul said, I make much of my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and may and save some of them. Okay, so what Paul is basically saying is that in his relationship with the Gentiles, his relationship and role was that of an apostle. However, to his own people, the Jews, his function was not as an apostle. He was more of an evangelist. Uh, he was hoping that his relationship with the Gentiles would pro provoke his Jewish people to become jealous of his ministry to the Gentiles. And as a result, hopefully they would be envious and he'd be able to minister to them and lead some of them to salvation. So Paul was an apostle, but not to the Jews, only to the Gentiles. Um, so his role to the Gentiles, a specific cultural group, was that of an apostle. However, his role, role to the Jews, his function to the Jew, Jews, another specific cultural group, was that of an evangelist, not an, as an apostle. I think of William Carey, who was an apostle to the people of India, but only India, nowhere else. Okay. Uh, uh, um, in one sense, Andrew Murray was an apostle to those of South Africa. Okay, Many men and women of God today are apostles to one cultural group, but not to another. Okay, Another thing we discover from Paul is that relationships and roles can also be based on specific regions or churches. 
What I mean by that is 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Paul said, am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not the result of my work as an apostle in the Lord? Even though I may not be an apostle to others. Look what he said. I may not be an apostle to others, but surely I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. See, Paul was saying that, that although he was an apostle, he was really only an apostle to those who he was working in relationship with. Okay? Uh, Paul had labored greatly among the church in Corinth. Uh, he had a very impacting fatherly and equipping relationship with them. And so he called them the result of his work in the Lord. And, he, and they were his seal or his, uh, another way of saying it, they were his confirmation uh, of his apostleship in the Lord. Okay, so as I said, relationships and roles uh, may not be based upon a cultural group, but it may be based upon certain or specific churches or uh, church networks or certain regions around the world. Okay, another thing we discover from Paul is that relationships and roles can change over time. This is so important. Everybody seems to want to be an apostle right from day one. Well, no, it's based upon the anointings or the gifts of God. Okay, and, and but God can anoint you or change your anointing or your gifts over time. In, in, in Acts chapter 13, verse 1, it says these words, the church at Antioch, in the church at Antioch, there were two types of fivefold ministers. There were only prophets and teachers. Okay, there was Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger. There was Lucian of Cyrene. There was Manon, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. And there was Saul, or called Paul. Okay, so this verse is telling us that in that young church of Antioch, there was not yet a fully functioning fivefold ministry. There was only two of the fivefold ministries functioning. And as I said, there were only prophets and teachers. And Paul was listed in that group. So he was either a prophet or a teacher. And as we discover, based upon Upon his ministry at the time, it was obvious that at that time Paul was functioning as a teacher or as a really a teaching elder in the church at Antioch. However, in the very next verse, Acts chapter 13, verse 2, uh, Paul, as we remember, the Holy Spirit said, uh, ordered the church at Antioch to release Paul and Barnabas uh, as missionaries to the work that the Holy Spirit had called them as missionaries. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, on his first missionary journey, Paul was never called an apostle. Did you ever notice that? On the first missionary journey, he was never called an apostle. Why not? Because he was not yet doing the work of of an apostle. In, in fact, during that first missionary journey, he was doing the work of an evangelist, and he won many people to Christ uh, in, in that first missionary journey. Now, on S Paul's second missionary journey, Paul or people began to uh, refer to Paul as Paul the Apostle. Okay, um, why? Well, because on his second missionary journey, he started to do the work and function as an apostle, and he actually created uh, one or more apostolic centers, and he started training up other ministers, which is the function of a true apostle, to train up other fivefold ministers. See, and that's why Paul could say to Timothy, he wrote to Timothy later in life, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11, Paul said, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. Now, that word herald there, uh, in the Greek, it means a herald of the gospel, which is really the work of an evangelist. And so Paul said that over the course of his life, he'd been appointed to be an evangelist and an apostle and a teacher. Okay? So... Now, so Paul was, had functioned over the course of his life in all three of these ministry functions. So relationships and roles can change over time. So God's giftings on you will cha can change over time. Now, let's talk about the fivefold ministries working together. See, the fivefold ministries can really be likened to uh, a family that works together to make a healthy, a healthy household, eh? Uh, a healthy household. Uh, the foundation of the family, or the church in this case, should be built upon the apostles and the prophets. It says that in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 and 20, you are members of God's household. 
God's family. You are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone. So let me explain to you kind of how this works. The prophets get the divine revelation. Do I put that there? Yes. They get the divine revelation and insights on God's desire for each local church and, and really for church networks or church movements also. Okay, Prophets get the marching orders, the divine revelation and insights on God's desire. Okay, But then... The apostles, as the architects, they develop divine plans and strategies in order to implement the desires of God. So they take what the prophets have said and say, okay, I'm going to develop a strategy and a plan to make this happen. Okay, And then the teachers come along and they explain the revelation and the plans, Okay, the revelation of the prophets and the plans and strategies of the apostles, and, and they explain them to the people so the people can understand and embrace the vision and cooperate with the vision. Okay. And then the pastors, they shepherd the people uh, to ensure that they're emotionally and spiritually healthy and that they stay united and they stay focused so that they can implement and work with the vision that God has given to the, apostles, to the prophets and apostles. Okay. And then the evangelists come and they reach out to those outside the church to bring in more people to be taught and pastored and equipped to do the work of building the house and doing the ministry of the Lord. Okay, so that's how they work together. Now, the apostles are also like the fathers of a family. Okay, they're, they're called to love and protect and care for the other four of the fivefold ministry the prophets, uh, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. And they are uh, called to continue to raise up new uh, uh, leaders for the ministry. Okay, that's so the, the apostles are like the fathers of the household. Okay. So, in summary, the fivefold ministries are not titles or offices, as some have said. The fivefold ministries are anointings or graces given by, by, by Jesus himself so that certain people in the body of Christ can, can serve Christ in equipping roles and functions uh, due to relationships and, and roles. And, and they're, but they're based upon the relationship they have with certain groups of people. Uh, a pastor is a pastor of a local church. They're not a pastor of someone else's church, right? So, so I, I'll say that again. The fivefold ministries are anointings or graces given by, by Jesus so, to, uh, um, so that certain people in the body of Christ can serve Christ in these equipping functions that are based upon roles and relationships that they have with certain groups of people. So rather than try to figure out Exactly, you know, like, am I an apostle, am I a prophet, am I an evangelist? Instead of trying to figure out exactly what God has called us to be, let's just allow God to use us the way He wants, the way He leads us, the way He anoints us, and, and let Him anoint us and draw out of us what, what He wants us to minister out of us. And eventually, as we do that, we'll start to figure out, oh, that's what I am. And really, the people around us will confirm it. They'll say, man, it's obvious you're this amazing pastor, or wow, you're an evangelist, or you're an apostle, you're a prophet, you're a teacher, you'll have the confirmation of the body of Christ. Never try to convince the body of Christ what you are. They will recognize it if it's in you. See, this is true success. This is true faithfulness to the Lord. Let the Lord use you, and the body will recognize the giftings that are on your life. God bless you.